I needed some terrain for a game of Forbidden Psalm. Here's how I made it. As with most terrain construction projects, it began with some XPS foam. I carved this into rock shapes using a sharp knife. Once I had my rock shapes made, I textured them using some balled up tinfoil that I just rolled and mashed around on the surface for a while. This is a pretty common way of you know, putting impressions in foam, and it works fairly well. I made these trees for another project that I subsequently abandoned, uh, but did not throw away. So, good job. These are Woodland Scenics armatures. Uh, I followed a Geek Gaming Scenics tutorial that I'll link in the video description for getting them to this state. The uh, bases for my terrain pieces, I cut out of eighth of an inch thick MDF. Um, I beveled those with uh, palm sander, I think. Uh, but honestly, if I had this to do over again, I'd probably use something thinner and maybe even um, polystyrene sheets or something, something lighter, thinner, that's not going to cause a model set on the edge of it to be tilted. Anyway, we dry fitted the pieces together first and then stuck them down with some PVA glue because PVA glue is cheap. After everything was glued on, I used the last of my homemade basing paste to add some ground texture to the pieces. I made this stuff at a drywall compound paint and sand a while ago. It's partially dried, which is where those huge chunks come from that I'm scraping off and throwing away. Added a little bit of vegetable matter. This is cocoa fiber. I think that means it's coconut husks that are shredded. Um, you can buy it in compressed bales from uh, pet stores. These is, It's for reptile terrariums or something. Um, one bale will probably last you your entire hobby lifetime. And after I did that, I, in a few places, um, added some static grass. You can see me here kind of pressing it down onto the PVA. I'm not using an applicator because I don't own one. And for something like this, it's not really necessary anyway that the grass stand up perfectly. Another use for some of that cocoa fiber is to create uh, sort of a mossy vegetation um, by putting some super glue in between the cracks on the 3D printed buildings. Um, I think this came out okay. I would probably not do it exactly this way again, but as an experiment, I think it worked out fine. After the grass was on, I drilled a couple of holes to stick the spikes on the tree armatures through. These Woodland Scenics trees come with a little stump that you can stick down, but because I'd already based the terrain, I couldn't glue it down. So we just drilled a hole and stuck them in. And after all that was done, I gave everything a liberal soak with a mixture of water, isopropyl alcohol, and PVA glue. Basically, the idea is to make sure that um, everything has been thoroughly inundated with adhesive so that it's hard and, and wears better on the tabletop uh, prior to painting. Speaking of painting, I started with a dark blue-gray on the rocks. Um, this is going to be different from the brown that I prime everything else because everything else is meant to look alive and rocks are not. They are rocks. And you can see I primed the vegetation uh, brown. I think that's hazelnut brown from Molotov. Priming the vegetation in brown is just an artistic choice. I'm going for a kind of a dead looking vegetation. You know, this is for Forbidden Psalm after all, where everything is grim and dark and doomed. So having lively, healthy looking trees didn't make sense. So, dead. Or at least dying. Um, I ended up repainting the foliage and grass green, going from dark green through sick green to goblin green. 
and then a little bit of I think dead flesh to top off the progression, just making everything look desaturated and gross. Then I did a little bit of airbrush highlighting on the pathways before finally moving on to dry brushing on the paths and rocks. I think I used deck tan for this. Just basically trying to get a unified lighter gray tone on everything. So for the 3D printed buildings, I had coated the rubble parts with some tile grout and sand which you can see I sealed with more of that PVA glue. And then, whoa, it dried really fast. Okay, no, just kidding. Uh, I primed the buildings in the same base color as the rocks, and then went at them in essentially the same fashion, just successive uh, dry brushing steps to lighten things up and you know create some contrast on the edges. Then I shaded everything down with some Payne's Gray, painted the vegetation with I don't know what green that is, but with a green and uh, then, you know, just some burnt umber to color in the rocks and dirt around the sides before closing things off with, yep, more uh, rocks and dirt on the sides. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I've got a set of scatter terrain I can use for Forbidden Psalm, Dungeons and Dragons, and basically any tabletop fantasy skirmish scale thingamajig that I want to do. Um, it was actually a pretty easy project and something that I think just about anybody can do, assuming they have access to a 3D printer. Of course, that's not to say that you couldn't do something pretty similar using EVA foam bricks uh, or just about any other method for building a ruined wall, they would just be a little bit more labor intensive or time consuming. And yeah, that's it. Scattered terrain. There's how I made some. You can probably make some too. We'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for stopping by. Cheers. Cheers.